Welcome back to QDads. I'm Steve, and yes, Apple TV have dropped another sci-fi series with Constellation, which seems to teeter between multiple realities. The series follows a Swedish woman, Jo, as she returns from space after an incident, and she sets out to expose the truth about space travel and uncover the missing pieces in her life. I'm going to dive deep into the first three episodes of the show and try to uncover not only what's going on in the episodes, but also my own thoughts about the series, because things get confusing pretty quick. At the moment, I'm kind of 50-50, as some scenes make no sense at all and scream out rushed writing, where the other half is deeply invested into finding out what's happening. But is this because it's a good show, or more because I like to challenge my brain? Anyway, let's do a quick recap of all three before diving into some of the big questions, like what caused the collision, what are in the pills, and what seems to be the cause of the show's quantum entanglement. And if you're new here and haven't subscribed, please hit that button as it helps us to grow the channel. The show opens with Joe driving along an icy road with a glowing canister, later to be revealed as the Cal Data Core. There's a lot of mystery, as she seems to hear her old daughter, Alice, crying out for her, and the first big question, what happened to Daddy? We then jump back five weeks earlier, as Alice talks to Joe in space, giving us a quick introduction into the IIS and some of the other cast. The dreaded incident happens, and we get absolute carnage for a few moments, as the IIS is breached and Paul is lacerated, as well as being pinned to a wall by flying debris. This then leads to two crazy scenes, the first being the amputation and the eventual death of Paul. Houston Station. Operation completed on Paul. And secondly, a spacewalk by Joe to assess the damage and seeing the lifeless corpse of a 32-year-old USSR cosmonaut. It's a buddy! Joe, please confirm. Joe? Now, my first initial thoughts on this was that this must be Irene, but from an alternate reality which I'll touch on more towards the end, but a scene in episode 3 pretty much solidifies this theory for me. They evacuate the ship and Joe stays behind to fix the Soyuz 1 capsule to return back home. Now here, she has 45 minute intervals to assess and fix the damage, but starts to lose both time and her mind as we slip in and out of different scenes. We end up back on Earth, walking along a corridor, before being back on the ship, after losing several hours. And finally, we hit back to Earth again, bringing us full circle to the start of the episode. Here a few details have changed, like the photo on the wall, that instead of being some angelic person being carried, is now a demon looking around the room. Does this signify the fact that one reality leads to death? The death of Irene, the death of the poor guy in the convention in episode 3, or even the death of Magnus? as he's nowhere to be seen in this reality. Episode 2 then starts with Jo carrying her daughter across the snow and putting her in a bath to keep warm. She then notices her other daughter, but the same daughter, but not the actual daughter. This is getting really confusing. Alice 1 is in the bath. Alice 2 is in the bed. Jo is confused by what is happening and even questions Alice 2 about being her real daughter. We then flick back to the IIS as Joe continues to fix and replace the batteries, but is interrupted by a hissing noise. This would naturally freak you out in space. She senses something as she sees Paul's severed hand, and when she touches it, Paul is revealed in all his glory. <laughs> a great detail here is Buddy's giving a press talk, but the funny thing is, he does this with only the top half dressed, like many of us did during Covid. Apple strikes again with these great details. It's also worth mentioning here that he has previous experience bringing back bodies, something about this 1977 space mission. Joe manages to power up the Soyuz 1 and starts to initiate the detachment sequence. It's actually quite a bit comical here that Joe continually gets frustrated at the constant reminders to retrieve the Cal data core. RPL request to retrieve Cal data core. Don't endanger yourself. <laughs> she does retrieve it and starts the process to leave, but suffers with a bolt system lock, where the only way is a second person on the outside. Now, interestingly here, 
is that Joe is saved from the system issue by someone on the inside, seeing again as she floats back to Earth. Now, I want to touch on this for a moment. So my first thoughts on this revolve around two realities and two different deaths. Later on in the episode, we see Joe at Paul's grave, but this then cuts to Paul with a walking stick and flowers, like he's visiting a grave. I believe that to be Joe's grave, so tying it back to the IIS, I think the person she sees is herself, or through some kind of quantum madness, she's seeing the events of another timeline, one where she has to stay behind so Paul can return. The theory is also confirmed when Alice talks about Joe not being her mom and the subtle hints that Alice's friend Wendy said. It should have been your mama. Your mom's a crazy bitch. So in one reality, Joe died. In one, she survived, but she seems to be able to move through them both. Moving on, the episode ends with Joe landing safely on Earth and an onslaught of helicopters and trucks go looking for her. Here is one of those 50-50 moments I mentioned at the start as we see a random coyote approach Joe in the capsule. It made no sense and I'd rather see the parachute pull the capsule a little more. Episode 3 follows a Hansel and Gretel trail of beads dropped by Alice, which I think hints towards a series of clues that might help Joe find her way back to the right reality later on in the series. We see a press conference where the members of NASA and Roscosmos try to debunk Joe's USSR body theories and claim she saw a garbage bag floating through space, conveniently the same colour as the spacesuits. They are all given some pills and told to take them until further notice. More on this in a moment. We get some awkward dinner moments as the relationship between Magnus and Joe is different. Joe starts to notice things like Alice not understanding Swedish and the colour of the car being different, all signs that something isn't right. There's a tense moment between Bud and the convention guy, as he tries to claim he's a liar and doesn't even know the name of his first dog, which also connects to a bigger mystery around the alternate realities. Irene and Henry get it on, and the episode ends with the police heading down an icy road, presumably after Joe, for either stealing the Caldata core or killing Magnus. Either one I'm fine with. But I want to talk about another scene in the final moments of the episode, and no, it's not the awkward love scene we witnessed. <laughs> you may have noticed I referred to both Bud and Henry Caldera through this, and in the final moments, Bud mentions to the convention guy that he knows Henry did certain things, and seems to imply that he knows he's living Henry's life. Does this mean that you can cross over realities, like walking across another plane of existence? Or does Harry know he is living a different life? And has this happened because of Irene? I mentioned at the start about the 1977 Apollo mission. Does this involve Henry losing Irene and ultimately lead him to swap lives with Bud in a reality where she is alive? Now you're probably screaming at me saying, that's not right. So yes, it could be the fact that the dead cosmonaut is Irene's sister, and Bud and Henry are in the same reality, but no longer on talking terms, but the fact he didn't know his first dog's name, and other tidbits, I think that points to another reality. I want to touch briefly for a moment on Alice. I don't fully understand why she's affected, as she hasn't gone into space like Bud or Joe, but still appears to have the same effects. Is this due to her connection with her mom, or is there something we're missing? Let me know in the comments your thoughts and theories, around why Alice is experiencing the interference. Also I want to add here, what is in those pills? They told Joe and the other astronauts to keep taking them until further notice. Was it just me, or was Bud taking those same pills 50 odd years after his Apollo mission? Why? Is there something in them that causes memory loss, creating the blanks in their mind? Or is it so they can run experiments themselves? Also, what happens to Magnus? I predict Joe kills him. That's it. Now, overall, the three episodes were okay. Yes, there were some questionable moments, like the coyote scene, and even the parenting of Alice. That just seems off. But for the most part, the intrigue of what's going on, and trying to unravel the secrets to this quantum entangled madness series, and the direction it's heading, is keeping me pretty invested. But it's definitely one of those series you need to sit to be fully invested. 
Me and Ben will be watching the series throughout the next few weeks, giving you our theories and thoughts. But let us know in the comments your thoughts on the series. Does it live up to Apple's latest standards? Why do you think Alice crosses between realities? And do you think Irene is or was the dead cosmonaut? <laughs> Don't forget to subscribe, hit that like button, and as always, we'll catch you next time with something new. <laughs>